It wasn't even close enough to be a horse race. The Arlington City Council has decided not to approve the recommendation for the proposed Trinity Turnpike. Barton Thompson told me today why he voted against the measure. Our highways uh, are supported by the gasoline taxes and, and the taxes that we all pay. Uh, and our toll road, of course, is supported by the users. And, and this, is, this is somewhat of a fair taxation by the users. But <clears throat> I feel as though in this case, if you'll look, in the state of Texas, uh, we have only two toll roads, and, and they're in our area. The other parts of the state, uh, they don't have to pay their toll roads. Uh, the highway department is providing this for them. And the people in our area are helping to provide these, ta these roads for the entire state. And I feel as though uh, at this point that uh, when the toll road uh, cannot pay for itself by itself, uh, with the terrific cost of land cost and everything, I feel as though uh, we, should, we should look more towards the state to the, get the tax dollar back that we're paying in the form of taxes. The resolution against the turnpike tonight has no legally binding effect on the Texas Turnpike Authority. They can still build their turnpike if they want to. However, without the support of the people in this area, without the support of Arlington, Irving, Grand Prairie, Dallas, and Fort Worth, they're going to be hard-pressed to justify it. And Arlington is not about to give that support and approval. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move in Arlington. I'll show for 49 <laughs> percent. Know. But you will see more women delegates. To Definitely. The because otherwise we've got, we're kind of like where, who was it, Patrick Henry was, you know, taxation without representation. We're doing everything to us, you know, as far as like setting the laws, all the laws that we live with, and yet we don't have anything to say about them, you know. We would like to have as many women as possible, not only in, in uh, the north central Texas, but in wherever your group comes out, wherever your group meets, try to get in your group and try to work, you know, cooperative with the group. It's really important. Is the Women's Caucus militant? No, we're not militant. Because most of us are not uh, like none, like lib members or anything like that. We're just tired. Unfortunately, I've never seen a social organization in which government control got less and less. The history of governments is that they get bigger and bigger and control more and more. So I'm not optimistic it's going to be any less. Now, the question is, how much worse is it going to get? I can't answer that. I, uh, I do have a kind of a deep down faith in the innate common sense of the uh, American people. And, uh, and also, I have the feeling that there's a great bulwark of strength behind any real efforts to curtail freedom of the press, which is known as the Constitution of the United States. But if a, if a court comes along and interprets the Constitution in some other way, I don't know what will happen.
we think that the Dallas citizens are intelligent enough to know exactly what they need here. Uh, they can best determine uh, the needs as far as law enforcement is concerned. Uh, they can function better to have a local group uh, of volunteer tax-paying citizens such as the Civil Service Board that can respond quickly to the change in needs of the community rather than trying to turn it over to a group in the state uh, where they have to go to the legislature in order to get any changes made or even turn it over to the federal operation that uh, the, the needs of Dallas citizens can best be served right here in our own community as well as be determined what we do need right here. Is the board going to work one way or the other to influence the election? Uh, this was not a point of discussion, uh, Mr. Reynolds. It was, um, uh, we're not, at this point, I don't think the board would take a stand as far as becoming actively engaged in trying to influence people's thinking other than to put the facts out. We're, we are very desirous that the people know the facts, and I think once people know the facts, they'll make the right decision. I think one, it would be more convenient for a new or old teacher to be able to get a small booklet and find out what our policies are instead of having to go through the uh, policy book that we have through the system. We would have an idea when we work, what our duties, our obligations are, and what our services should be to the students and to the system. How long will it take you to draw up a contract like this? Uh, it would probably take, it's, it, We'll start on it if the factory representatives approve or give permission for us to start on this. It will probably take anywhere from two to three months to maybe two years. We are trying to make it as nonpartisan as possible. Where you know, I, I'll make an open appeal now for all the Republicans, Independents, and whatever you may be to please come out and help us balance it because okay. It's, you know, we have more Democrats than Republicans in Texas, so more people are likely to be, but we don't want it partisan. They what, can, what are some of the priorities you expect to come out in the organizational meeting this evening? Probably getting uh, the Equal Rights Movement passed, which isn't local, but also uh, Amendment 4, getting the Texas Constitution rewritten. And from that, we expect that to pass, and we expect the uh, legislature that sits in 72 
to be rewriting the Constitution. We would like to see as many women as possible in our legislature. The five members of the Dallas Civil Service Board got together with their secretary, J.W. Jones, to carefully go over the differences between the city's civil service regulations and the Texas law, which both policemen and firemen recently voted to adopt. The session took nearly two and a half hours, but by the time Jones and Police Chief Frank Dyson had finished outlining those differences and the differences that could be made in Dallas police and fire operations, the board had decided they favored retaining local civil service operations. In the face of police and fire petitions for a local vote to change the state civil service, Board Chairman W.S. Aston explained the board's position. 